only had one line in that. Well, it wasn't really a line. It was really a word. Well, what I said was... Mm. <laughs> I said... I'm sorry, Norma Jean. Call me tomorrow morning, okay? No, Jean, look, I'm pregnant, I... Bobby. It isn't his. He can't have children anymore. It, it's ours. Please, Bobby. We have to do something. Now. Okay, okay. <laughs> Take it easy. Take it easy. We'll do something. Norma Jean, think about this one last time. What do you think I've been doing for the last few hours? I have no other choice. Yes, you do. You can marry me. We can have the baby. You're very healthy, muy bueno. This will be easy. Up here, you're gonna do this on a kitchen table? It is a good place, no worry. Up here. We have no medicine, no sedatives here, but you can drink all you want. Okay, I brought my own. Where did you get those? They're tranquilizers, and they help. They really help. Bueno, you, outside, okay? Just a little sick uh, from the tequila, maybe. Is she okay, Doc? Si. All she needs is a little rest. Sleep. That's it, Bob. Enough of those? It's for the pain. I've got to relax. I need to rest. It was our child, Doc. And I had to do it. You understand, don't you? Don't ask me that. Bob. Look, I help, all right? I always. Understand. Forgive me. Sure. Go to sleep.
the Johnny Tide. She won that part in the Asphalt Jungle and a short time later a small part in All About Eve. She wasn't a star yet, but she was on her way. And then... And so John Hyde will be missed by all who knew him and whose lives he touched. In all of Hollywood, there was no bigger heart. What is she doing here? To everything... I don't know. She has no right to be here. Do something. A time to be born and a time to die. Would you come with me, please, Miss Monroe? Who are you? Please, don't make a scene. Just come with me. I just want to say goodbye. Quiet now. Out of respect for the family. I made him happy the last few months. Nobody else even cared. We want you to leave. Johnny! I Time to cast away stones. Time to get her out of that house today. I want you to pack her clothes, throw her out, and change the lock. You didn't think I'd leave you out on the street, did you? You know, I loved him, Bobby. Yeah, I know. And you don't hate me? I wish it was that simple. Oh, look, I can either take you to a hotel or I can take you to my place. But if I take you to my place, it's only for a while until you get set up, and it's strictly platonic between us. I don't want to go to a hotel. No? So it's your place until I get set up somewhere? Okay, but separate beds. Whatever you say. I felt bad about giving in to temptation, but she was Marilyn Monroe, even though I called her Norma Jean. And when she wanted to make love, she had a way of getting her way. I don't know how many guys on earth could have turned her down, but I wasn't one of them. Sure, I still wanted us to get married, but I decided to wait until she felt secure enough in her career to settle down. I never imagined how impossible that was for Norma Jean, but I was soon to find out. You came. You look wonderful. Really wonderful. Doesn't she look wonderful? Yes, she does. Pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Baker. This is Bob Slater. I wrote you about him. Uh, don't you remember? He's my hair. How do you like my hair? You've never seen me blonde before. I bet this is really confusing. It's nice. Are you okay? Mama, was your trip okay? Here, why don't I take the suit? No. Well, it's very nice to have you staying with us, Mrs. Baker. I'll bet you're hungry. Would you like to get something to eat? That would be nice. I was back in the old neighborhood last month. Back in Van Nuys. Remember Sam's grocery store? Remember where I used to sneak a few smokes? I was still there. The old store and everything. 
That's right. Now, do you remember Mrs. Howard, my old dance teacher? She's still there, too. She still has that ruler, the one she used to wrap me on the knuckles with when I didn't get the dance step right. <laughs> Which was most of the time, right, Mama? When she saw me, she remembered me right away. She asked me what I was doing, and, and I told her I was trying to be an actress. She told me I was wasting my time, that I didn't have any talent in her class. When I asked her how she could be so sure, she said, because when you dance, nobody claps. to me, Mama. I've waited so long to see you. Tell you what. Let's go back to the house. She isn't ready yet, Norma Jean. Maybe this is all just a little too much for her. But she has to hear me. Give it a little time. I need you, Mama. I need to know that you hear me. Please. Norma Jean. I want to go back to the hospital. understood her fear now, but that didn't make it any easier for me to lose her. By the beginning of 1952, she'd done some small parts in a few films. She still wasn't a star, but she was becoming a celebrity, especially when she started dating Yankee Clipper, Joe DiMaggio. I made a few movies myself. Beat westerns. Not exactly the big time, but it sure beat washing dishes. Dimaggio's busy. I didn't ask him. I'm asking you. If you don't want to help me, fine. Jack. I need some time. Norma Jean, I mean, Marilyn's having some trouble on this movie she's doing. What are you, a priest? No, I'm just a friend. What about my movie? Well, I'll be back in a week. No, you won't, Bob. If you take a walk, I'll have to replace you. Come on, Jack, she asked for my help. No, well, you're the one who needs the help. Look, she's scared, all right? Niagara's her first star in Rome and she's messing up. Tell me something. What do you get out of the deal? Some of the best days of my life, and some of the worst.
Well, we're away from the fan club, will you? Let's get this shot moving. All right, Mr. Rowe? Mr. Rowe. Mr. Rowe, Mr. Hassel, will I sign? Yes, please. I'll be finished for a few minutes. They're just fans, Mr. Rowe, they'll understand. Yeah, I will. Just a few more minutes. I don't think Mr. Hathaway's going to approve of this. Really? Well, how do you think he'll feel about this? Hi. My name is Bob Quaid. Can Marilyn send for me? I'm a uh, friend. Do you mind if I go say hello to him? Suit yourself, bud. too late. You saw it? Yeah, I saw him. You think I was wrong? Well, I think this is what you've been fighting for all of your life. Now you're throwing it away. My life? Yeah. But well, ever since I've known you, your life's been about acting. Now you got the starring role in a Henry Hathaway picture and... Bobby, I'm tired. No lectures. Oh, my Jean, this is a business. You can't get up one morning and say, I'm scared. Call off the extra. To hell with the director. I can do whatever I want. No, you can't. Now, without wrecking your career before it even takes off. Fear is normal. You just have to stop taking it out on everybody else. I'm not afraid. You are afraid right down to your bones. You're afraid to carry an entire movie on your own shoulders, and I don't blame you. I don't get it. How does a nobody like you talk to me about this? Oh, Bobby. I am not a nobody. The only thing I have ever failed at in my life is you. You can't seem to get us right. Where are you going? Back to LA. Don't you dare walk out on me like that. My fault. Don't! Walk down the steps, make a beeline for the camera, and then turn left. Okay. Yes, Mr. Hathaway. She's been great the past few days. A real pleasure. What's with her? Not what. Who? <laughs> and action! Enough? Now, keep it going. She's gonna get mad, Henry. No, she won't, Mr. Hathaway. She'll be fine. Men, get cut already, Henry. You've shot more film on my t-shirt than you have on my close-ups. Cut! After Niagara was finished, we went back to L.A. Henry Hathaway seemed to be happy with the picture, and so was Norma Jean. As for me, I was fired. The price of getting her back. Not that we were going to live together again. We both had enough of that for a while. But we were dating pretty regularly.
phone message, mind you. I'll wait. Cigarette? No, thank you. No, honey, it, it's just a little dent. Forget it. Who is this guy? Bobby, what are you doing here? We have a date, remember? So do we. I guess I screwed up, huh? Guess so. Why don't we all go inside and have a drink? What would you like, Joe? He knows where the bar is. This is my house, Joe. Bob's a friend. He's been here before. He acts like he lives here. I don't like it. I don't know where the bar is, that's all. Who are you going out with, Marilyn? Make up your mind. I don't like being pressured, Joe. Fine. Fine. Good night. Good night, Joe. He took that pretty hard, didn't he? You did that on purpose. Wait a minute, Norma Jean. Get out. I don't want to be manipulated by either one of you. Get out! I'm going to see a cut of Niagara next week. I hear good things, especially about you. I hope they're all true. You know what I predict, Marilyn? I predict a great future for us. Aren't you the same man who wouldn't give me a contract with Fox because you didn't think I was sort of in it? Someone may have been foolish enough to say so a few years ago, but you've given him ample reason to regret some very poor judgment. Now, what's this I hear about you and Joe? Nothing I hate more than seeing my favorite people having a spat. It's not a spat, really. Well, I don't care what it was. I want you two to kiss and make up. But... If you want to keep me happy, that's what you'll do. Kiss and make up. I bad touch myself. <laughs> That's what the mother says in the glass menagerie. <laughs> Joe proposed to me. And what did you say to him? Danny told me I should marry him. So did half the people on the Fox lot. So, everyone wants me to get married. Bobby, marry me. We can do it in Mexico. Are you serious? <laughs> You've been wanting to marry me for a long time. Oh, this is crazy. No, it's just too impulsive. This will never work. You've been trying to get me to the altar for six years, and you have the nerve to call me impulsive? I love you, Bobby. Marry me. That's not the way I had it planned, Norma Jean. Now there's no turning back. 
go all the way this time. There's no stopping us. So what are we waiting for? Enamored by the laws of the state of Baja and the Republic of Mexico, I now pronounce you man and wife. A beautiful kid. Don't pinch me. If I'm dreaming, I don't want to wake up. I don't feel any different yet. I do. Oh, I feel incredibly different. <laughs> I wish I could stay in Mexico. I wish we didn't have to go back. Well, Marilyn, I didn't marry you so that we could run away. I married you so that we could weather the tough times together. You don't have to hide anymore. We'll handle Vanek in the studio, and we'll do it together. You called me Mary. Yeah, I guess I did. No. I like it when you call me Norma Jean. Okay. Then Norma Jean it is. For now. And forever. She has definitely got it. This is one beautiful doll. You want to tear her clothes off, she's willing to be gentle about it. <laughs> you know, men don't dream about jumping into the sack with Betty Grable anymore. They need something new. They need Marilyn Monroe. She's already getting a thousand fan letters a week. When Niagara opens, that number could double, maybe even triple. Marilyn could become this studio's most valuable asset. And why is she getting married in Mexico? My secretary's sister works in wardrobe. Said Marilyn borrowed an outfit, went to Tijuana to tie the knot with some guy, and it was not Joe DiMaggio. <laughs> Hello. Yes. For you. Yes, Mr. Vanek. We'll be there tomorrow. Well, you two kids, welcome back. So happy for you. This must be the lucky fellow, Bob Slate, sir. Well, you two, what a pleasure. I, right off the bat, congratulations. Come sit down, please. Thank you, Mr. Vanek. Thank you. Um, Marilyn, thought you might be a little upset. Why would I be upset? We can't control matters of the human heart now, can we? If I could, all my pictures would be hits. Now, whatever makes Marilyn happy, that's all that matters. This marriage will only set her back for a little while. The damage is irreparable. Damage? Come on, Marilyn, let's don't be naive. What do you think you're selling up there on the screen? Sex. Plus talent, of course, but the men who buy tickets to come and see you, well, they like to imagine that you're available. And when they find out you're married, well, you lose some of your appeal. We have to protect ourselves. We have to cut back on some of the ads for the campaign for Niagara. Excuse me. Is that why you called us in here? To intimidate my wife? I'm not an ogre, Mr. Slate, sir. I can't stop Marilyn from doing what she wants. All I can do is advise. In my opinion, this marriage is bad timing. Now, it's Marilyn's happiness and it's Marilyn's decision. I'm glad to hear you say that. The point is, what's going to make Marilyn happy? Is it to follow through with Niagara, make the most of it, or wait a couple of years to hopes that maybe a role this good might come along again? What are you suggesting? An annulment. I know, I know, it seems like an enormous sacrifice, but hear me out. Go back to Mexico, get this marriage wiped off the books. Now wait, 
a year or so from now, you kids can get married again. After Niagara has made Marilyn Monroe a star. Now, I want you to understand, I don't like putting this kind of pressure on you two. We have an entire campaign sitting on hold just because of this. We have to know. Now. I'm going to leave you two alone. You have a very big decision to make. Well, it's easy to see how we got to be a studio, boss. What are we going to do? Do? You tell him to go to hell. You must have Norma Jean. You're not going to hold back on Niagara, not after they already spent the money to make it. How do you know? Tell me, Bobby, how can you be so sure? What Mrs. Ennick said, it makes sense, didn't it? Didn't it? Niagara's my lucky break. It's everything that you told me it could be. What if it's ruined? What if the press finds out? Take it easy. All right? I'm not going to let anything or anyone ruin this for you. Not even me. I don't want to believe you. You must believe that. You're never going to leave me. But maybe for now, maybe it, maybe it would be best if we went along with him. Maybe it would. So, has your marriage been consummated? Yes. Do you want to know record off the marriage? That's correct. Well, you understand, I am responsible to the authorities. Perhaps an extra fifty dollars. Oh, your copy of the marriage certificate. Oh, I'm sorry, I cannot give it to you. But uh, I think I have another way. days of my life. As we drove back to L.A., we told each other it wasn't over. We must have said it a thousand times. And a thousand times, I knew we were lying. Niagara made Norma Jean a big star. Several months later, I was working on the set of a Western when I heard this story over the radio. Marilyn Monroe had married Joe DiMaggio. America's sex goddess had married an American hero. I knew it was a wedding Zanuck could approve of. But the marriage lasted only nine months. And then a few weeks after their divorce... Marilyn, what are you... I was in the neighborhood and I thought I'd stop by. It's still there, isn't it? What? That old feeling. Mm. I'm all alone. And you know who I think about? You. Not Joe. Not anyone but you. This time... No. It... No, there isn't this time. It wasn't in the stars for us, Norma Jean. I think I've always known that. God, you can make a man crazy with wanting you. You're like a drug. I can't do it anymore. I guess you took the cure. No. No, there is no cure. That's why I'll always love you. 
everybody loved you, Bob. Didn't you know? Joe took charge of the funeral arrangements, and he wouldn't let anyone from Hollywood attend, so we were all forced to watch from the sidelines. Maybe he was right. Hollywood sure didn't save us. Four of the men who carried Norma Jean's casket never even knew her. day Walter Lynch will ask me if it was worth the heartache to his American God. I said yes. And that's what it is. That was the special gift. Up there on that screen, Marilyn Monroe made all men feel loved. And she was a God. But to me, she was my very own Norman Jean. <laughs> 